Hello and welcome to Sue Finley Designs. First of all, let me apologise for the delay in getting this video to you. It was quite a multi-layered piece, so the, it took a little bit longer than normal. Plus, if you're um, a subscriber to my newsletter, you'll you will have got a video last week showing my um, latest camera, which is this mini camera, which I've attached to my respirator and what I did was I done an experimental piece with the camera just to see if it worked so for those who are members of my newsletter they will have seen that video it actually it was it was it was a bit of a strange video in that because your head's moving and everything like that some people said that they felt it was there was a bit of motion sickness uh, happening on there so I didn't actually end up releasing the video to the public because I didn't want to make people sick so I just left it for those who um, are members of the newsletter what I have done is I am still using this camera but only um, just for close-ups so um, it's highly edited so that you can get in close to see what I'm seeing. So that was the whole idea, so that when I've got the mask on, you can actually see what I'm seeing. So hopefully this works out okay for people and it doesn't make people feel um, like there's a bit of motion sickness going on, because I wouldn't want that at all. So so that's, that's that. Um, I'd like to thank everybody who came to the um, winter art show and sale. It was a huge success and I was delighted with the amount of people that came down and introduced themselves and let me know that they watched the videos and I even had one lady from Ireland who sent her son in. He came in and said, you know, my mum follows your videos and she said that I had to come down and introduce myself to you. So I had a good chat with him, which was lovely. So hello to the lady in Ireland. I think it's Ireland Resin Art. So thank you for sending your son down. And everybody else who came in, it was a it was a great day. Uh, I'd also like to mention this week that I um, I've just had my very first book published on Amazon, and a lot of you'll have seen the book already, which was the essential uh, beginner's guide to resin art techniques, which I had out as an ebook. But due to many many requests for a paperback version, I actually got out of my comfort zone, reformatted the book and uploaded it to Amazon. It took 24 hours for the review team to approve it, which I was so excited about. I didn't realise how excited I'd be at publishing a book, but there you go. So links for that will be in the description also. As it stands at the moment, the only links I've got are for um, America and the UK. Now, I believe it will be available in all the other Amazon Marketplace now it is only in English the book and as soon as it becomes available in other countries and things I'll let you know um, and we'll post links etc etc so anyway so what's happening now is that over the next few weeks and months i am actually got two, two more events coming up I'm doing the Mundaring Hills Open Studios I've been invited as a guest artist so I'm creating pieces for that and I'm also doing a joint exhibition with a friend who's a glass artist so I'm, I'm making pieces for that so the videos over the coming months are going to be pretty much on those pieces that I'm making so I'm tr so one side of it's going to be sculptures and vases and things and on the other side I'm trying to create um, lots of textural pieces for the exhibition so I'll be creating videos on those. So what have I been working on this week that there's been a bit of a delay? I've been working on this piece, excuse me, just let me get hold of this. So I've been, just let me get hold of it there. So I've been working on this piece here which I used my jigsaw to cut the shape then um, in the centre there, I don't know if you can see that, I've actually applied the gems and things in the centre to give it that sort of geode look and then through there you can see I've also used the foil again like last time. Now I really do like using the foil and I would probably, the next piece I'm planning to do with foil is actually going to have 
the foil all over the whole piece and here's me hand behind here <laughs> so it's going to be all over the piece and I'm actually going to do a tabletop with the foil and resin as well so there'll be a video coming up of that so what I also wanted to show you is what I've done with the edges of this I don't know if you can see that quite well see how it's all textured along the edges I used texture paste to create the edges so that it so after using the jigsaw it wasn't a hard edge I used that on there although on the bottom it is still a hard edge but that's just the bottom so I wasn't too worried about that so it just gives a more finished look on the edge see how it looks all textured there so I'll show you that I had a bit of difficulty um, adding that to the wood but once it was on there it was stuck fast so you don't need to hear me any more of me rambling on so without further ado let's get into the video so as I mentioned earlier I cut the shape out with the jigsaw but as you can see it's got quite a, a hard edge and I wanted to create more of a textural edge so using some multi-purpose filler but you can use wood filler texture paste um, tile grout anything that you've got to hand that adds texture you can add that to the side now adding this was quite difficult it was it would fall off a little bit but once it started drying and things it actually stuck quite well so just persevere with it and apply that and then I just used my fingers and things around the edge just to make sure that it was well stuck and that it was um, nicely textured around the sides so once that was dry which I left overnight it was now time to add the foil so I'm just using PVA glue um, on the edge of where I want the foil to go now this piece was a commission piece but the lady I commissioned it for she said I'd used too much on the, the foil on the edge but you can use you know however much you want I actually do like the foil and my next piece like I say is going to have more of that foil over the whole board but for, for this piece I'm just uh, similar to the last one where I'm just applying a foil to a, a section of it so you just crinkle the foil up um, I didn't want to over crinkle it because I didn't want the crinkles to be too tight so I just gently crinkled it and then just stuck it to the, the glue this again will be left overnight to dry before um, trimming the excess of the foil off and I just use um, my hands to just peel off the excess of the foil. I'll also um, add a little bit of glue to the top edge of the underlying foil just to make sure that I don't when I rip off the the top piece I don't end up with a gap so I'm just allowing that to overlap slightly as well. So it's been 24 hours now since the glue was applied and it's now dry so I'm now just taking off the excess foil. Um, I will use this opportunity to touch up any areas like there, there was a little piece peeled off so I'll just stick in a little bit of glue back on there and just stick in a little bit of foil back on. Um, and because I'm going to be painting the, oh sorry, priming the wood, that will allow the the glue to dry while that's left overnight so I don't need to worry too much about that. So it's been a further 24 hours and now I'm ready to add the gems around the um, bottom cut edge. Now what I've done here is I've put a bit of plastic down on the table and just placed the board on top because when I apply this resin I need a hard base for the gems to sit on so that they don't fall through so just by sticking it on the plastic this just makes it a little bit easier and as you can see I'm using my uh, respirator camera to give you a bit more detail and I hope this doesn't um, make you feel uh, motion sick because I am doing this at real time I'm not speeding it up or anything like that so it's just showing you how I add the resin to the gems and then apply it to the 
the board. So now I've moved back onto the fixed camera so that I can speed the process up because you don't want to be sitting watching this video for over an hour. So I do speed up the processes because at the end of the day you can see what I'm doing. You don't need to see it in real time. Well, not all of it anyway. So what I'm doing here is I'm just building up layers around the edge now with the larger acrylic shapes and I'm going to then add the smaller acrylic diamonds to fill in gaps and make sure that it's adhered so again I'm coating the pieces in the resin and then just using a spoon I'm just spooning it into areas where I feel that it needs a little bit extra for bonding so because what you don't want is this to be falling off and then again this has been left overnight to cure and as you can see that's stuck quite well so I can now remove the plastic and mount the board on some stand so that I can then pour the resin because obviously I don't want that sitting flush to the table uh, I need it to be raised up so that the resin can flow off so as you can see that's worked out quite well around the edge I'm quite pleased with how that turned out and I think that would quite look quite nice in a resin geo shape So again using my respirator camera I, so I can show you the detail I've coated these acrylic diamonds with a tinted resin so I've tinted the resin with India ink and like in the previous section I've mixed it with a stick to make sure that all of those gems are well coated. Now I had a lady mention in the last video saying did I need to then pour extra resin on top to make sure these were well stuck. You don't need to because you're coating the whole gems in resin and because resin is a form of glue it sticks really really well so you don't need to add more resin on top. So so although it looks like it wouldn't stick very well it does actually stick very very well and it ends up being really hard. So again just speeding up the video here just so that um, you know we're not spending all day showing you what I'm doing here. And I'm just mixing it in batches until I've got the required amount. And then using the tinted resin, I then just pour that into the centre using a stick to make sure that that goes right up to the edges and meets the gems top and bottom. Now for this one, I did actually pour some of the blue onto the... The, the bottom edge so that that blended in. I could have mixed that with the tinted resin in the first place when I was sticking it down but I'd just done it with clear with a hint of sparkle previously and now I'm just going on to the the outer layers so this one is um, a navy it looks black there but it's actually a navy um, and it's the same colours that I used on the last piece but this this was supposed to be a commission piece and they wanted the same colours so that's why I use the same colours. I'm thinking the next one's going to be more like a purple amethysty sort of colours so which is going to be the tabletop I think I'm doing next so we'll have to wait and see because I might well change my mind. <laughs> so here you can see using the respirator camera me pouring the white between the teal and the dark blue. Now I don't mind it blending slightly because I am going to blend it with some mineral turpentine. So what I'm doing here is I'm just blending it so that when the turpentine reacts with the resin you get um, some interesting effects happening. Now I haven't used the mineral turpentine for a while because with this angel white you don't need to. But I wanted to create different effects than I did on the last piece so this is why I'm using the mineral turpentine but you don't have to that's entirely up to yourself and you don't need a lot and as you can see I'm just using the stick to um, just drizzle some of that through the resin and here it is speeded up you can see when it's speeded up how the mineral turpentine reacts with the resin and just helps the resin move and then just create some interesting effects happening there Now I decided that the resin wasn't really moving enough for me so I got my heat gun out and decided to blow it slightly to just 
get a little bit more movement. I didn't want it to be moving too much so I didn't linger too long in areas of just enough to get the resin moving. So as you can see the heat gun will blow that so I've got that on a high setting just to blow that around. And then I'll just play around with it just adding more white where I think it needs more white and more blue and things like that so it's just till it looks how I want it to look. So at this stage I felt like it was missing something from the center of the geode it just looked a little bit lost so I just added a little bit of white but it still wasn't doing it for me so I decided to add a little tiny bit of the dark blue just to give it a bit of contrast and again using the heat gun just blow that around slightly so that we've got a little bit of contrast going between the teal and the white of the acrylic diamonds and just using my finger just blended that ever so slightly before then adding some more acrylic diamonds to help finish that area off so it just gives it that extra sparkle and extra bling so just using a spoon I'm just spooning that around the outside and what that does is because I'm just spooning it in the gems will sink and they'll sink to reveal the sparkle of the foil underneath so it's quite quite effective and it's um, certainly worth the effort to do the extra go the extra mile and applying these to the outer edges of the center if that makes sense Well please let me know what you think of the idea of the camera attached to my respirator. I personally think it adds an, a little something extra but I would like to hear your comments on that. As always you'll find a list of the products used in the description below along with some other handy links. So if you like this video and like to see more resin ideas then please subscribe to my channel or better still go and browse my other videos. I have plenty of ideas to keep you inspired. So see you in the next video. Bye for now.